What's up guys Bogdan here and welcome to the import export hub channel for the weekly import export news and before I start I have a huge request from you guys it will take about five seconds just push the like and the subscribe buttons if you find the info presented here at least slightly interesting and of course be before I begin the quiz question of the week who is the largest importer of honey in the world in terms of uh, value in 2020 and the options here are China, Russia and the United States. OK, so starting with uh, this week, I want to cover also the freight index for uh, and uh, for this, I've uh, chosen the freight us uh, Baltic index, which is a freight index provided by uh, freight us in cooperation with Baltic Exchange. And uh, basically it provides um, the market rates for uh, the 40 feet uh, containers only for the ocean freight based on aggregated and uh, anonymized uh, real time data for freight of all kinds spot tariffs. And uh, we see here that uh, for today, 21st of May 2021, the global index is at uh, $5,063. The big uh, movers are the North America to uh, North uh, Europe, sorry, to North America East Coast trade lane with an increase of uh, 20%, while uh, North America East Coast to China and East China decreased with uh, 9%. Anyway, the rates uh, are more than three times bigger than in the same period last year. And unfortunately, the forecast is that uh, this huge rates will uh, continue also in uh, 2021 if nothing happens in the meantime with the Federal Maritime Commission's uh, investigations. And uh, before I uh, move on to the next news, the correct answer is the United States with more than $441 million worth of uh, imports. And here I have an article coming from uh, UNCTAD, which uh, states that the world trades recovery from the COVID-19 crisis hit a record high in uh, the first quarter of 2021, increasing 10% year over year and 4% uh, quarter over quarter. Uh, the main driver is the strong export performance of uh, East Asian economies, Anyway, the report is also interesting as it compares the COVID-19 crisis with the 2015 and 2019 recessions and it seems that the trade volumes are on the path of uh, recovering faster from the COVID-19 crisis compared to the 2015 and 2019 recessions, but are still uneven, especially among uh, developing economies. Anyway, the fiscal stimulus packages who were uh, prevailed, prevailing in uh, developed countries positively impacted the support of the global uh, trade recovery, although uncertainty remains about uh, what the future holds. Now, moving on to the next news, uh, and uh, this is a really interesting news as it seems that finally somebody is trying to tackle the leverage and the huge bargaining uh, power of the shipping companies as the National uh, Transportation Link from, uh, League from the United States. It's calling on the US Congress to make some uh, changes to the US shipping laws and update the Shipping Act in order to reflect the current day circumstances. Uh, some of the areas they are focusing are related to the prohibition of common carriers and uh, maritime uh, terminal operators from adopting and applying unjust and unreasonable damage and detention rules and practices. Another focus area concerns the requirement for carriers to adhere to minimum service standards, address unfair business practices that relate to access to um, equipment as well as unreasonable allocations of uh, vessel space by uh, ocean carriers considering foreseeable import and export uh, demand. And uh, what I really find interesting is to expand uh, the Federal Maritime Commission's authority to act on uh, complaints 
filed against anti-competitive agreements between ocean carriers that operate with antitrust immunity. So they are talking about the three alliances. Uh, now, if you ask me, this uh, initiative has uh, small chances of getting through if uh, players uh, like Amazon, Walmart and other big uh, importers or exporters from the US are not somehow uh, aligned. And the idea is that the frustration generated by the lack of equipment, the lack of uh, av available space on the vessel, um, supposedly uh, damage and detention, abusive charges and so on, is not felt by Amazon or uh, Walmart. I think that the most affected are the small and medium importers and exporters from the US who don't have the volumes to negotiate with the carriers and uh, from this, I can predict that in 3, 4, 10 years there will be some uh, big freight forwarder who will start to time charter or voyage charter 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 TU vessels addressing the needs for small and medium importers or exporters in the US. And you might say that uh, the carbon footprint will increase or something like this and yes I couldn't agree more but then again the small and medium importers or exporters are not so much advertising their carbon uh, footprint. They just want to make a honest uh, business and be part of an uh, ecosystem supporting uh, international trade. Anyway, uh, this is a really interesting topic to follow up and uh, rest assured that I would uh, do just that as soon as I have uh, new info available. And if you think that uh, only the shipping containers are hard to find, think again, as it seems that also the pallets are in a big shortage, at least in the United States, and uh, puts the fresh produce supply at risk due to the low availability of uh, lumber in order to repair and uh, build new pallets. Uh, also, the escalating price of uh, lumber when it is available um, non-perishable inventory dual time increased uh, and uh, the lack of available trucks to relocate the pallets. And uh, there is a saying, uh, every crisis is filled with opportunities and uh, this is a really, really great opportunity for entrepreneurs in the US who want to operate in the pallet sector. So guys, if you are thinking of opening a business, I think that a good opportunity is for you to open a pallet repair center. It's just a thought. Anyway, uh, moving on to the next news, which is uh, telling us that uh, China extended the tariff exemption for the 79 goods under the so-called uh, Section 301 action uh, that was due to expire this Tuesday, so 18th of May. Anyway, you can read the entire article, but the idea behind is that uh, both the United States and uh, China are trying to resume the trade talks towards a healthy business relationship. And uh, speaking of relationships, it seems that the European Union suspends uh, the tariffs on the United States uh, steel and aluminium in a bid to reboot trade relations. So let's wait and see if the United States and the European Union will finally manage to come to a common ground. And uh, moving on to the last news, which is related to the United States wheat exports for 2020. And uh, here I just want to highlight the findings of the Foreign Agricultural Service from the United States. So Mexico, the Philippines, Japan and uh, South Korea continue as uh, consistent buyers accounting for 41% uh, of uh, total US wheat exports. China, on the other hand, was the largest market to grow in uh, 2020, tenfold year over year. Another driver for the United States uh, wheat exports was the extension of uh, Brazil's uh, wheat tariff uh, rate quota for uh, non-Mercosur countries and uh, along with uh, reduced competition from Argentina uh, allowed the United States wheat uh, to gain market share in uh, Brazil. But at the same time a major challenge for the US wheat 
is the competition from major exporting countries in uh, price sensitive markets like uh, Africa and the Middle East. Okay, so that's it for today. I really appreciate you've come to this part of the video. Don't forget to comment, hit the like and the subscribe buttons. And until next time, keep your business safe. And uh, now, excuse me, I have to organize my daughter's birthday party. Bye-bye.